Hello, happy July 12th, I think. Yes. Today we're going to have Unit 23, Session 2. So we're going to learn something else that Jesus taught. Now, parents, the song that we're singing today is the Just As I Am, um, the kids' version from Gospel Project. The words are posted on Saturday on the Facebook page if you don't have them memorized yet. And today's activity has the potential of being fun. Um, parents, you'll need to get some different grocery items or things that you purchase in a store and put them at different places in the house. And then the kids will need paper and a pencil so that they can go around and guess the price of each of those items. And so we will pause the lesson later for you to do that activity. Now, back at CBC Kids Worship, Miss Jennifer, Jennifer Cullen and Addie, will be teaching the lesson during children's worship today at church. Or they did. Um, so this is confusing because I'm recording this on Friday, posting it on Sunday after church. Anyway. I was going to attempt to teach this lesson without the cats around, but they were crying so pitifully at the door, I was afraid that you would hear them and think that I was mistreating my, my cats. So if they jump in front of the camera like normal, we'll just have to let that go. So if you remember last week, session one, we had a new big question. And our question this session is, what did Jesus teach when he was on earth? So remember, now back in CBC Kids Worship, we're starting a list on the whiteboard about the things that Jesus taught. And so we listed the things that he taught us last week in the Sermon on the Mount. Well, Jesus taught about God and his kingdom. He also taught that all scripture is about him. So Jesus taught people that scripture was written about him, Jesus, because, well, it is. That's why he taught that. Okay. Um, I'm in the wrong place. So sorry. Now, parents, if you want to pause this, let the kids go write down the prices of the items that you've placed around the house. Okay. So hit pause. Okay, you're back. I hope you guessed correctly. Um, parents, I hope you remembered how much those things cost and that they didn't all come from Dollar Tree where everything's dollar. Okay, so when your mom and dad or your grandparents um, go to the grocery store, it's important that they add up the cost of the items that they're buying um, because you're gonna get to the register, right? You're going to get to the register and you're going to need to have enough money to pay for the groceries. Um, they want to be able to take the groceries home. And if they didn't count the cost as they were shopping, they may not have enough. And then they might have to choose to leave something. And hopefully it's not the thing that you wanted. So today we're going to learn that following Jesus is worth any cost. So we're going to learn the cost of following Jesus. Now, last week, we looked at the Sermon on the Mount, which was one of Jesus's most famous teachings. Who knows? Maybe one day somebody will say, oh, this is one of Miss Jody's famous teachings. Not yet. But Jesus had lots of teachings, and this is probably one of his most well-known, the Sermon on the Mount. And we learned that Jesus taught people how to live in God's kingdom. If you're going to follow Jesus and obey God, you have to know what that means. So that's what Jesus taught. We can't earn our place with God. Um, we can't check off the list to get it. We can't be so well behaved that they're like, oh, well, of course she gets it. Um, the only reason we can become a Christian and follow God is because of Jesus, right? Because what did he do? Exactly. 
He died on the cross. So this week, we're going to learn that obeying Jesus can be very difficult at times. It's not always a bed of roses. It's not always a piece of cake. It's not always any of those cliches that I'm spouting off at you. So the name of today's story is called The Cost of Following Jesus. Now, here's the illustration that someone created to go with today's lesson. Um, and if you look at it, we have people going this way. We also have people going this way. Hmm. Now there's a whole lot of people, whole lot of people going this way and it's a nice paved road. Or at least it's a clearer road and over here it's a dirt road. But they're following, they're following an illustration that's supposed to represent Jesus. So, those of you that have your Bible with you or can get your Bible, today's story is actually in like four different chapters. In Matthew, it's in Matthew 8 and 16. Or in Luke, you can look at 9 and 14. And so, I actually have mine marked today. So it wouldn't take me as long as it's been taking me. Now remember, I encourage you and your family to read these chapters, to read what the scripture says, the story. But Miss Jody likes to tell the story instead of reading the story. So I encourage you to read the scripture, though, because that's a whole lot better. Um, okay, so let's go to the story. Now, as would happen, there's always a large crowd when Jesus is around, right? So while large crowds were traveling with Jesus, many people wanted to follow him. And one man said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus told the man, Foxes have dens, birds have the sky, have they have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said, Lord, I will follow you, but first, let me go bury my father. Sounds like a reasonable excuse. I mean, a reasonable request, but Jesus said, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. See, Jesus was only going to be on earth for so long, and he knew that he was about God's business and that it was very important. Jesus told the people that following him wouldn't be easy. It would cost them a whole lot. Anyone who comes to me must be willing to leave his family. You must love me most of all, more than your own life. Anyone who is unwilling to suffer cannot be called my disciple, Jesus said. Jesus urged the people to think about what they were doing. He told them a story. If you wanted to build a tower, you would first sit down and figure out what would it take to complete the tower. Otherwise, you would build the foundation and you wouldn't be able to finish your tower. People would laugh at you. Well, then he told them another story. If you were the king, you wouldn't go to war against another king without considering whether your army would be great enough to win the war. If you have too few men to fight the war, you would send some men to ask for peace before you would battle. Jesus wanted the people to consider the cost of following him. If you are not willing to give up everything, you cannot follow me, he said. Following Jesus means giving him complete control of your life. That's not always easy, but it's worth it. He might tell you to pack up your family, move to Africa, just like he did JC and his family. Jesus said, whoever gives up his life for me will find true life. What good is it to have everything you want in the world if you give up life with God forever? 
That sort of goes back to what we talked about last week in CBC Kids Worship about when he says not to build up treasures on heaven on earth because you can't take them with you. The same thought. Don't be so worried about what you have here. Give up everything so that everything you do and everything you say points people to Jesus. That is a pretty intense story today. These teachings of Jesus, they can sometimes be hard to hear and sometimes hard to understand. It's very common to believe that God wants us to be happy. But how can we be happy if we know that we're going to suffer hard times if we follow him? Now, last week in CB Kids Worship, we talked about how even when we're sad and having a hard day, we can be joyful because our joy comes from the Lord. You see, the answer comes from understanding there's a difference between what the world calls happiness and what true joy is. True joy comes from God. The world often says that happiness is the good feeling you have when everything is going the way you want it to go. The Bible promises the opposite. When we follow Jesus, we've got to expect that we're going to have some hard, sad times. But thankfully, Jesus offers is better than all of the happiness that the world could give us. Jesus offers true joy. It's not a feeling good because things are going well. It's a feeling of peace and hope because you understand that God is in control, even during a pandemic when the schools close down. We can feel joy even when we're sad. Joy comes from knowing that no matter what happens to us while we are living in this sinful world, that one day Jesus will return. He will restore the world and we will live with him forever if we accept him as our Savior and our Lord. When we choose to follow Jesus, we must give him complete control of our lives. Sometimes that can seem scary or even sad, but the truth is we gain something much better than we ever had to give up. Following Jesus is not always easy, but it's worth it. You see, Jesus taught that it requires commitment and sometimes sacrifice when we trust him. We give him complete control over our lives, over our choices. True life is found in Jesus, who gave up his life to rescue us from sin. And he did that by dying on the cross, but not staying dead. He overcame death and sin when he came back to life. Following Jesus is most definitely worth it. So, today's lesson tells us that following Jesus isn't easy, but he is worth it. All right, let's look at our Bible verse. It's a long one. Okay. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 14, 25 and 26. So Jesus was telling them that when he left earth and went back to heaven with God, that God was going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would continue to reveal truth to us and also remind us of what Jesus taught through the scripture. Okay, now, do you remember who our missionary was last week? 
If you can remember how to say his name, I will be so impressed because Miss Jody has to look at the book. It is the Balisingham family, maybe. Um, the dad is Kesavan. And Kesavan, here he is. And Kesavan has a family. There's the family. It says that his wife is Viji. His son is Josiah. And then Micah. Oh, I need a new picture. And then Abigail. But now there's another one. There's an Emily. So they actually have four kids now. So maybe by next week I can find a better picture because this just has the three kids. This picture doesn't have Emily in it. And so now the oldest one is eight. And the one that they're holding is three. So actually, maybe they just left the baby somewhere. No, she looks like she's about to. So there's another baby. And the baby's name is Emily. Okay. So, Kesavan and his family, they live on mission in Toronto, Canada. Now remember, he used to be in a gang. He had been in a prison. But he became a Christian. He heard about Jesus and the gospel. And so now he does ministry. They do normal things that other families do, but they always try to live in a way that will teach others about Jesus. Kesavan says he prays that each of his children will also become faithful followers of Jesus. And I'm betting that your parents and grandparents pray the same prayer too. He hopes that he can baptize each of his children one day and then see them lead other people to Jesus as well. They know that following Jesus isn't easy, but he knows that it's worth it. So let's pray for the Balasingham family in Canada, as well as the missionaries that our church supports. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Kiss of On's family in Canada. We thank you for his wife, we pray that you would give Viji opportunities to uh, minister to um, other ladies in her neighborhood. Father, we pray for Josiah, Micah, Abigail, and Emily. We thank you for the faith of their parents, and we pray that as they grow up in their family, that they would learn about you and that they would seek to follow you um, regardless of the cost. Father, we pray for the Newells and their work with the Jesus Film. We pray for Darby and her work on college campuses. We pray for the Westbrooks and their church plant in California. We pray for the Efflers and their mission work in Africa. And Father, we praise you that last weekend we heard about the cats finding a home. And this week, this week, um, the kids' passports have arrived and their plane tickets have been purchased. So, so, Father, we just praise you for working those things out for the Kimmers. And Lord, as their departure in August approaches, I pray that you would provide a buyer for their house so that that would be one less um, burden that they have to fret with. Father, I pray that you would make us mindful of opportunities to tell people about you and that you would help them to see your love through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, now it is time to sing. And we're singing just as I am. And I don't know why I'm saying it like that. Alrighty, let's pull up the music. Here we go. Just as I am. Oh, just as I am. Just as I am, oh, just as I am. 
within and fears without a lamb of God, I come, I come, lamb of God, I come, I come, just as Yes, all I need is the So what's that leave? It's time to show what you no 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 no. Show what you know. Alrighty. Um, number one. Jesus said the man, son of man, was no has no place to do what. No place to lay his head. What did Jesus say a person must take up to follow him? His cross. What did Jesus say about a king going to war? That he would consider his army to decide whether to go to war or to try to get peace. What do you think we must be willing to give up? Why do you think we must be willing to give up our family and even our life to follow Jesus? That's a big, big question. Well, if we truly love our families, we'll want to put Jesus first, right? And if we put Jesus first in our life, then we will share his love with our family. It's not like you're running away from them. You're just putting Jesus first. Um, what are some of the ways you might suffer for Jesus' sake? Can you think of anything? Well, maybe you might have to stand up against your friend if they're being mean to somebody and you know that's not right. Maybe, well, think about the Kimmers. They sold a bunch of their stuff, right? All of the, all they have left is fitting into a storage containment. And then they're taking a few suitcases over. So they had to give up a bunch of stuff. And for two years, they're going to see their family just a little bit. And they had to leave us. Come on now. They gave up a lot. And what do we gain by following Jesus? We gain life with Jesus and a promise that this life is just temporary 
and that Jesus will come back and we will live with him forever. Let us end today's lesson with a prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the amazing gift of your son, Jesus. Help us to trust you and to understand that there is nothing we could ever sacrifice to obey you compares. To, there's nothing we can sacrifice to obey you that would compare with the wonderful eternal life that we receive by following you. Help us to be willing to give you control and to make you the center of all that we are and all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now remember, during your family devotions today, it's Matthew 8 and 16 and Luke 9 and 14. Those are the chapters that go with today's lesson. And I will be back next week. Have a great one.